What's up, sports bettors? We're going to be talking about middles. So middles or middle bets, I like to call them the low-risk lottery tickets of sports betting. So I know it sounds a little too good to be true, the low-risk lottery ticket, but we're going to talk about middles, which is a strategy that's very underrated, honestly, and a lot of sharp bettors will implement to kind of, you know, obviously make money and take their game to the next level. So let's get into middles, right? So the first thing you need to realize, and we can go through an example right here, is books, they don't have the same odds as one another. You know, this we discuss all the time here at Odds Jam, but... In sports betting, what's so crazy is all of these books, they set lines independently, right? So you can see tomorrow, Devin Booker, his line is five assists. So we're just looking at the player assist market on the odds jam screen. His line is five on prize picks, five assists over under five. On DraftKings, it's four and a half assists. And on FanDuel, it's five and a half assists. So you have prize picks at five, DraftKings at four and a half, FanDuel at five and a half. So these sports books, you know, there's some discrepancies in where the line should be set for Devin Booker for tomorrow. So kind of as an example of what a middle bet is, and obviously this is an extreme case, but it's just to make the point clear, is imagine DraftKings had, you know, Patrick Mahomes' passing yards line at 249 half, and FanDuel had Mahomes' line at 280 half. So DraftKings has his line at 249 half, and then FanDuel is at 280 half, right? So the line is set at different levels. So what a middle is, what a sharp better would think is, whoa, DraftKings is way below FanDuel. So let me take the over on DraftKings, the under on FanDuel, and if Mahomes throws between exactly 250 and 280 yards, then we're going to win our over. Right? We'd want to take the over on DraftKings. We're going to win the over 249 half if he has 250 or more yards. And then if he has 280 or less, so we have this 30-yard gap where we win both bets. Right, Our over will cash and our under will cash over 249 half, under 280 half if Mahomes throws for 270, 260, 275 passing yards. So that's what a middle bet is. And again, this is an extreme example. That would be a pretty big middle right? 31 yards. But regardless, this is just kind of illustrating a point. So the first thing you need to realize is like all profitable bets, middles aren't super common, right? It's not like every day there's thousands and thousands of profitable middles. But the point is, is all of these sports books, like you look at DraftKings, right? You look at just the NBA, all the different markets they offer, player points, player rebounds, player assists, player threes, right? All of these books are setting these lines independently. So kind of across the entire sports betting market, there's millions of odds, right? And maybe only 0.01% of the odds across, you know, kind of all these sports books. I think Odds Jam has something like 176 sports books. If you select every sports book, there's 176 sports books just on Odds Jam. All these books have thousands of odds, at least 10,000 odds on their platform at any given time. So again, sometimes these sports books screw up and you get massive discrepancies like Mahomes over under 249 half, 280 half on two different sports books, right? These are line discrepancies, market inefficiencies, whatever you want to call them. So even if only 0.01% of, let's say, odds on sports books are profitable betting opportunities, let's say there's a million odds across all the sports books in your location, that means there's probably 100 profitable middles at any given time, right? So as a sharp better, you know, you're not trying to place a middle on every single player. You're letting the data kind of show you the big discrepancies like this example on Mahomes. And when you see discrepancies this big, you want to take advantage of them. So another thing to mention is, you know, aside from the fact that you're searching for gold or the needle in the haystack, right? Most odds on sports books aren't going to be profitable middles. But what we're going to go through is when you have software that kind of shows you which middles are profitable, you can still make some pretty good money. So the second thing you need to realize about middle betting is you need multiple sports books, right? So this example was between FanDuel and DraftKings. So you're only going to have this middle available to you if you use DraftKings and FanDuel. If you only use Caesars, 
then you're missing this profitable betting opportunity. So I'll kind of give you an example. Um, we can go to the odds jam middle betting tool, and we're going to go through an example here in a bit. But you can see there's middles between points bet and DraftKings, Bovada and my bookie, right? Bovada and Caesars. So the more sports books you have, the more middle betting opportunities there are, right? So your job as a sharp better is ideally have as many sports books as possible. You know, I say this all the time, but you can see on Odds Jam, if you used all 176 sports books, the top play has a profit margin of 4.61%, and it's on Bet Rivers right here, over four and a half rebounds for Bridges. If you don't use Bet Rivers, then you're missing out on this profitable betting opportunity, right? If you, if let's say you only use DraftKings, then you may be like, oh, there's no profitable bets in the market right now except for this one, which has a profit margin below 1%. So as a sharp better, if you want more profitable betting opportunities, more middles, more positive EV bets, whatever, you need to get more sports bucks, right? So what we can do is we can say, okay, so the first thing to realize about middles is like arbitrage bets, um, they're very low risk, right? So middle bets in middle bets, like this example on between DraftKings and FanDuel, is you're always going to win one bet, right? Let's say Mahomes throws for 200 yards. Well, in that case, you're going to win your under on FanDuel and you're going to lose your over on DraftKings. So in a middle bet, one bet is always going to win, either the over or the under. Like you can look here, you're always going to be winning Mahomes over 249 half or his under 280 half. There's a 30-yard gap or a 31-yard gap, whatever, where you can win both bets. But in every case, if Mahomes throws for zero to 1,000 yards, you're always going to win at least one bet. So it's pretty low risk in that sense because you're not going to lose all your money, right? When it's a when you're placing a middle, it's going to be two bets on two different sports books because the line is set at different levels and you're always going to win at least one of your bets in the middle opportunity, right? So we're always going to win DraftKings over 249 half or FanDuel under 280 half for Mahomes. Right? So the middle of course is what we want to hit. And that's for Mahomes to throw 250 to 280 yards. But even if it doesn't hit, you know, our downside isn't that low because either the over or the under is always going to win. So we can keep going along. So like arbitrage, you know, arbitrage betting, if you're new to arbitrage betting, is when sports books, and again, this is rare, just like middle betting, but all sports books, they try to set lines independently, and sometimes they screw up, right? So here you can see there's a big screw up between Bet Rivers and Points Bet. Two sports books in New York, Points Bet New York, Bet Rivers New York. And you can see Hawks minus 12 and a half, you can get for plus 300 on Points Bet. And Nets plus 12 and a half is minus 278 on Bet Rivers, right? So this is a big market inefficiency. We can bet on both sports books and make a risk free profit. That's arbitrage betting, right? This is exactly what an arbitrage bet is, is when you can take an over and under, or, you know, Nets plus 12 and a half, Hawks minus 12 and a half, two equal and opposite outcomes. And due to massive discrepancies between where sports books are setting the line, I mean, literally minus 425 versus minus 278, this is the top line discrepancy in the entire sports betting market right now. Pretty insane, the top line discrepancy, and you can make a risk-free 1.46% return on capital. So a lot of people, they'll be like, oh, 1.46% risk-free return, that doesn't seem that great. You have to remember, today is Saturday, tomorrow Sunday, this game is going to be over in like, you know, 15 hours. So you're earning a 1.46% risk-free return in less than a day. Right, So if you're arbitrage betting every day at 1.5%, your bankroll, 1.5%, 30 days in a month, you're going to have a 45% risk-free ROI every month. Granted, you have to be arbitrage betting every single day, right? Sports betting is not passive income. So even some of the examples you know, we go through for middle bets, 
you're going to notice like, wow, these are pretty profitable. That's pretty awesome. So this example we're going to go through is right here. Grizzlies over 125 half and under 126 half. So again, you're going to notice, hey, uh, FanDuel and Resorts World, which I guess is a sports book in New York, they don't have the line set at the same level. 125 half, 126 half, right? So if we take the over on FanDuel, the under on Resorts World, if there's exactly 126 points, we're going to win our over on FanDuel, over 125 half. We're also going to win our under 126 half on Resorts World. So we can go through that here in a sec, but let's just continue with the PowerPoint. Um, so again, middles are low risk lottery tickets, right? Because you're always going to win at least one of the bets. Every middle bet is going to have two wagers on two different sports books. The over on FanDuel, the under on DraftKings. You know, one side of the spread on points bet, another side of the spread on win bet, whatever, right? You're betting on equal and opposite outcomes in an arbitrage bet. In a middle bet, the line is set at slightly different levels, 235 half versus 236 half, but you're always going to win one bet, right? So again, more books means you're going to have more middle betting opportunities available to you. More sports books means more profitable betting opportunities, more money in your pocket, right? So it's a little unintuitive, but because all books set lines independently, as a sharp better, you know, you never know where the value is going to be on a given day. So if you don't have, you know, bet rivers, you're not going to be able to place this arbitrage bet. Here, if you don't have, you know, DraftKings, you're not going to be able to place this arbitrage bet. More sports books, more profitable bets, right? Like, let's say, you know, sports books screw up 0.1% of the time. Let's just say that's the case, right? If sports books screw up 0.01% of the time, you know, so they're screwing up 0.01% of the time, let's say each sports book, sports book screw up percentage, right? Let's say each sports book has 50,000 odds on it, right? Sports book odds. So each sports book has 50,000 odds. That means on every sports book, there's going to be, you know, 50,000 times 0.0001% on, gosh, on each sports book, there's going to be 50,000 times here. So on each sports book, there's going to be five profitable bets at any given time, right? And Odds Jam will kind of hunt through the market to show you these profitable betting opportunities. But what this means is this is only for one sports book, right? Ideally, you have 10 sports books, and at any given time, there's 50 profitable bets, and you can just take the most profitable bets in the market, right? But anyways, let's keep going through this video. Um, let's get into an example, actually. So middles, um, essentially, if they're over 0%, so you're going to notice here, middles, any middle over 0%, you can't lose money, right? So it's not even like a low risk lottery ticket in that case. If the middle percentage is over 0%, then it's impossible to lose money. And we're gonna go through that kind of here in a quick example. So other considerations before we get into this example, um, I guess are first of all, how big is the middle? So you need to consider like how big is the middle? Right? So if sports books, let's say, are setting the line at five and a half versus six and a half goals in the NHL, like one goal in hockey is a big deal, right? Versus 240 half versus 241 half in an NBA game. So one point in the NBA is a lot less impactful than one goal in hockey, right? So one goal in hockey, five and a half to six and a half, is a big deal. Whereas in the NBA, 240 half versus 241 half is not as big of a deal. So you need to consider, you know, for this middle, how big of a deal, you know, is this opportunity, right? If we're considering, for example, if we go back to this, Mahomes 249 half versus 280 and a half passing yards, that's a big middle, right? It's 31 yards and 31 yards for Mahomes to end up between 250 and 280 yards that's probably happening like, you know, 15, 20% of the time. That's a big middle. Whereas again, if we go back to this NBA example, 240 half versus 241 half, one point in the NBA, it's just not as big of a deal. Um, the second thing to mention is as always, 
you're taking advantage of market inefficiencies as a sharp better, right? You are beating sports books to realizing their own screw ups. DraftKings FanDuel have 50,000 odds, let's say, on their site at any given time. You go to DraftKings, there's so much different stuff you can bet on, right? Tons and tons of different stuff. Tons of markets, tons of players. They can't keep everything in check. They're trying to set their own lines independently, right? They're setting odds um, independently from FanDuel. So as a sharp better, you know, we're hunting through the market. We're looking for those rare few betting opportunities where DraftKings is screwing up. But you have to remember, you know, these sports books also try to make sure their lines are in check. So, you know, you have to move fast to get down the best betting opportunities. If a really good betting opportunity occurs, there's a chance someone at the sports book, you know, a trader at the sports book is going to realize, hey, we're screwing up pretty big. We should move this line. So you have to move fast, right? You're taking advantage of market inefficiencies. You got to move fast. So another thing to mention is like everything in sports betting, you know, when we're talking about odds jam is slow and steady wins the race, right? Um, like you have to remember when you're arbitrage betting, a lot of people will be like, oh, again, 1.46% doesn't seem like a huge arbitrage bet is that's a daily return. If you're earning a 1.5% risk-free return every day in a month, that's 45% a month. Your bankroll goes from 2,000 bucks to 2,900, right? Your bankroll goes from 10,000 bucks to 14.5K if you're earning 45% returns. And this is risk-free returns with arbitrage betting. So like all things in sports betting is this isn't a get-rich-quick scheme, you know, you got to consider um, that these returns are daily. That's why I love sports betting. It's why sports betting is so powerful. These returns are every day. 1% a day means 30% a month, right? 2% returns a day in sports betting means 60% a month. NHL, hockey, right? Games are the same day. Your bets are almost always going to be for games that day or for the upcoming day. So here's an example of just kind of, you know, again, if we go back to this example of five and a half versus six and a half goals in an NHL game is a lot bigger than one point in an NBA game. So one run in baseball, one goal in hockey is obviously a lot bigger of a deal than one point in basketball. And you can kind of see that in the odds, right? If you go from five and a half to six and a half goals, it's minus 145 to plus 110. That's a 55 cent swing in the odds, as you can see on DraftKings, right? 55 cent swing from five and a half to six and a half goals. Whereas if you look at NBA for one point, it's only a 10 cent swing, 234 half versus 235 half. And this was from a live game. So a lot of times it's oftentimes less. It's only five cents or so, right? 234 half to 235 half minus 135 to minus 125 that's just 10 cents but anyways let's go through an example of a middle bet because that's most helpful so what i have pulled up right here is grizzlies over 125 half at plus 235 on fanduel grizzlies under 126 half at minus 200 on resorts world so what we can do is we can just run through the math briefly right and you'll notice this middle bet right here it's a positive percentage. So what this means is we're gonna make money regardless of if our middle hits or not. So the ideal circumstance is there's 126 points in this game for the Grizzlies. We win our over, we win our under. But even if the Grizzlies have 120, 110 points, we're gonna win at least one of our bets and still make a risk-free profit, right? So if the percentage is positive, and you follow a middle calculator, you're gonna make money no matter what. You're gonna be profitable no matter what. Now, if this percentage is negative, right? So we can actually see, if I go over to the middle tool now, we can see if there's any negative middles. Um, I'm filming this video a little late at night, so there probably won't be many middles, but we can take a peek because why not? If I go over to the middle tool and open it up, we can see what happens. But um. As I wait for this to load, let's just go back to my example. Um, 
and we can run through the math. So we have the Grizzlies over 125 half on FanDuel. We're getting plus 235. So we're betting 100 to win 235. And the Grizzlies under 126 half, you're betting 200 to win back 100, right? So the plus number is greater than the minus number, which means our middle is going to be profitable. And again, like you have to remember, follow the calculator, right? Follow the calculator. So let's say we have a $250 bankroll on FanDuel. Let's hit it for 250 bucks. What this calculator is going to tell us is, hey, hit the under on Resorts World for 558 bucks and 33 cents. But as a sharp better, typically what I do is I just round, right? So this calculator likes to keep everything exact, but also it's a little weird. So let's just say you bet 250 and 560. 250 on the over at plus 235 odds on FanDuel. On the under on Resorts World, you put 560. Literally follow the calculator, you know? Pull up this little calculator for this middle we're going through. I'm not sure why I picked this one. Pull it up, follow the calculator, right? So imagine the Grizzlies have 125 or less points. In that case, if the Grizzlies have 125, 120, we're losing our bet on FanDuel, so we're going to lose our 250 bucks. If the Grizzlies have 126, we're going to win. So our profit on FanDuel would be 250 times 2.35, right? We're betting at plus 235 odds. So 250 times 2.35 is 587.50, right? Now on Resorts World, if the Grizzlies have 125 or less points, we're winning. We're betting 560 at minus 200 odds. So our profit is simply 560 divided by two, 280 bucks. If the Grizzlies have 126, again, this is where both bets are gonna hit. Then we're going to win our over 125 half on FanDuel. We're going to win our under 126 half on Resorts World. So, like, the ideal outcome is the Grizzlies have exactly 126 points. We don't want more. We don't want less. We want exactly 126. So, what you're going to notice, and I'll put this spreadsheet in the description, is if the Grizzlies have 125 or less points, we're making exactly $30. If the Grizzlies have exactly 126 points, we just freaking made it rain. We made 867.50. If the Grizzlies have exactly 127 points, or I apologize, 127 or more points, we're making 27.50. Right? Just literally following the calculator, if you kept, if you used the exact stake of 558.33 on Resorts World as opposed to 560, then you'll notice both of these numbers, right? If our middle doesn't hit, our profit is going to be 29.17. But because I rounded a bit, it's just screwing up these numbers a bit. But again, because I rounded just such a small amount, 558.33 to 560, you're going to notice, hey, you know, it's not that big of a difference in terms of your net profit. But again, if you did 558.33, what you'll notice is, okay, you know, um, then 29.17 is what you get, just like the calculator says. So then your net profit, regardless of what happens, if the Grizzlies go 125 or less or 127 or more, your net profit will stay the same, right? And if you wanted to round to, let's say, 550 instead, it would change the numbers a bit as well. That's middle betting, right? So that's middle betting. Low risk lottery tickets. You know, there are oftentimes some really profitable middles. So we can see for tomorrow, there are some, but they're negative. So what a negative middle means is you can lose money, right? But you're not going to lose a lot of money. So what a negative middle means is, for example, if I just pull this up, in this case, if our middle doesn't hit, if there's not exactly 227 points in the game, then we're going to lose negative 1.11%, which in this case, based on what I put into the calculator, 250, 190, is going to be negative 4 bucks and 85 cents. So sometimes it's profitable, right? So let's say it was negative 1% and you're getting over 6.5 goals in an NHL game versus over 7.5, right? over six and a half, under seven and a half. Like in that case, it's worth it to pay negative 1% to lose 1% of your money if your middle doesn't hit. But you need to consider what we discussed previously, 
you know, which is kind of, you know, are we talking about five and a half versus six and a half goals in an NHL game? Because the probability there's exactly six goals in an NHL game is really big, right? The probability there's exactly six goals in an NHL game is probably one of the most likely amount of goals, six or seven goals in an NHL game probably happens like 20% of the time. That's a big deal. Five and a half versus six and a half goals in an NHL game is a really big deal. 240 and a half versus 241 and a half in an NBA game, eh, not as big of a deal, right? I'm not trying to pay too much money if my middle doesn't hit in an NBA game because one point, it's just not as an impactful, right? Like the probability there's exactly 241 points in an NBA game, probably like 1.5%, right? It's nowhere near as big as there being exactly six goals in a hockey game right? So you have to consider the type of middle you're betting on. So hopefully this video was helpful. It's late at night. Figured I'd do some evergreen content, some educational videos. So I'll have a, some more out soon. And um, let's make some money, guys.